Today's deck from Tactical Masters, we're going to be showcasing to you guys one of the more complicated ones, but don't worry, that's what I'm here for. I'm going to simplify it down for you guys so you guys know how to play Valence. A Valence is super interesting and also very complicated because it doesn't feel like you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. It feels like you're playing a board game and it literally converts Yu-Gi-Oh into a board game. The board is basically every zone you have, your pendulum zones are your spawn points, and you're pushing monsters forward and you're just building the field from there. And that's the interesting mechanic about this. And the form of removal that this deck has is also very interesting. You get to push monsters into the spell and trap zone. And I think that's kind of the best form of removal because they're not leaving the field, so you're not triggering anything. And yeah, they're kind of stuck back there just jamming, you know, jamming the flow of your opponent. So that's why this deck is really cool. But we're going to start off by going into the deck list, starting with the monsters. So to kick things off with the monsters, there's a lot to explain. So I'm going to explain as I go. So starting off with the most important monster here, we have Shinonome, the Valence Priestess. She's the most important monster in your entire deck when it comes to starting your play and keeping your engine going and keeping your hand advantage full because she is your searcher for both your spell cards and your monster cards. And you can get both effects off as long as you have the right components. So let me explain how these monsters work overall in general. So all of these Valence monsters on the field as monsters, they have two effects. They have one effect that is their ignition effect and then they have the second effect, which is going to be their trigger effect. And the trigger effect usually works by shifting them from one zone to another. So there's a lot of effects that revolve around moving them from different zones. So to keep that in mind, all of the level four or lower Valence monsters, uh, for them to even attempt to use their ignition effect, they must be special summoned onto the field. And that is why that's really important to get her special summon onto the field. And uh, luckily for us, their pendulum scale and the pendulum zone effect uh, allows you to special summon them from a pendulum zone. For the level 4 or lower, you do not require any other kind of monster or field spell to perform that special summon. So you summon basically into the zone uh, in front of it, so the adjacent zone that is empty. If it's not empty, you will not be able to perform this uh, special summon. And on top of that, for the level 4 or lower, you are restricted. Once you use that effect to special summon, you're restricted from special summoning anything but valence monster or monster from the extra deck so luckily your extra deck is completely intact so you can still have access to anything that's not valence related in the extra deck i think that also includes the other pendulum monsters that are face up in the extra deck however anything from the deck or hand will now have to be named valence or else you cannot special summon them so that's the restriction strictly for the level four or lower because they are more or less the uh, the cards that enable you to play so for the next card, we're running three up. We're running three Valence Buster Baron. This is a very important card as well. This one enables movement. So if you special summon out this card, your ignition effect is that you get to target one of your Valence monster in your main monster zone and shift it over to a different zone. I believe you cannot target yourself. It has to be another monster, but that's fine too because and essentially you want to move stuff like your Priestess. So once you get that movement, you can get additional effects. And if you move itself, then you will be able to take a pendulum zone card and move it over as a continuous spell card. So note that a lot of these monsters, there's different uh, typing to them. You have a fire machine and you have a water spellcaster. And all the higher level valence monsters, the level sixes and above, if you do not control a matching type <laughs> to uh, the monster that you want to summon out of the pendulum zone, they'll be stuck there because they do require you to control either the field spells, like each one has their corresponding field spell, or you have, say, a monster of the matching type and attribute, then you'll be able to summon them out from the uh, pendulum zone. So that's how you can get a little bit of a leeway there. Next, we have two copies of Voltage Viscount and two copies of the Scion the Valence Archer. So Voltage Viscount, I don't want to max out on this card in particular, but I do need the names and I do want the pendulums so that I can perform my fusion summons later on. So the extra names are nice and they are somewhat anchors because they can be normal summoned onto the field and basically unlock your higher level of Valence monsters. Uh, for the Voltage Viscount, this one is there to put your pendulum monster from your extra deck back onto the field, either into your pendulum zone if you move your zones left and right for the trigger effect or using the ignition effect you can put them into a spell and trap zone so how do you get it out of the spell and trap zone you might ask well that's thanks to the field spell you can just push it back onto the field so you get to respawn your unit so that's what the vi count is for as for the archer this is a monster based disruption or rather monster based interaction and removal so there's two things it does if you move it then you will trigger the monster removal effect either you get to bounce it back into your opponent's hand or destroy that card so how do you determine that you flip a coin 
Both effects relate to flipping a coin, and the other coin flipping effect using its own ignition effect is to either have the attack of a monster, or you get to negate that monster's effect. So. Overall, if you use this card correctly, you might even be able to clear two monsters with just one archer. So moving on to the level 6s and above, these monsters no longer carry the restriction where you have to special summon them to use their ignition effect. And also, if you do special summon these monsters out from your pendulum zone, they do not lock you into special summoning only valence monsters except from the extra deck. So you do not get to put into any restriction. Now, the reason why we play three copies of this monster in particular is because this one helps you maintain card advantage because you roll a die and then you excavate that many cards and you get to add the one card uh, into your hand that's valence name. So because of that, this is a little bit more risky but it is still a very useful card because you want to maintain as many monsters as possible in your hand and access to special summoning them whenever you need them so this is what this card does as for the other effect it's another die rolling effect however the result is two three four or five and if you have say a monster in your spell and trap zone you get to special summon that monster back into the column as long as you don't roll a one or a six so that's Marquest. Next, we have Nazuki, the Valence Ninja. This is a very important monster because it lets you move your monsters into different zones. Target one other monster in the main monster zone, move it to an adjacent zone, horizontal monster zone. And similar to the Mad Marquess, if this card moves to a different zone, uh, you get to summon out one of your Valence monsters in your Spell and Trap zone. Now, unlike Mad Marquess, Mad Marquess can summon out any monster. This one can only summon out uh, your Valence monsters. As for the remaining big monsters, we have one Valence Dominator Duke and two copies of Hojo the Valence Warrior. So, in terms of what they do, they have something that affects the spells and traps, and they also have something that impacts the board in a very significant way, uh, especially related to monsters. Now, for the spells and traps, these cards can target spells and traps. This one can only target set spells and traps. This one can only target face up either player's spell and trap zone. This one will prevent its activation for the entire turn. This one will return cards to the hand. You can even return some of your own cards to your hand, such as like Senate Switch, so that you can activate Senate Switch again and use Senate Switch to move your cards once again. So that's something that you can consider for yourself, or you can use this card to remove some of those field spells because those field spells can be activated by both players and you don't want your opponent to have that kind of advantage from the stuff that you have done to them so anyways as for the monster base effect if this card any of these cards are moved so for the movement effect this card will allow you to target one of your opponent's face-up monster and take control of it. It cannot activate its effect, cannot attack, but the take control is permanent and now it carries the name of a valence monster. So you can use this for like fusion material and if you put it into an extra monster zone column, you get to convert that monster into a fusion monster if it is, uh, I believe, level five or higher. Uh, so you do get to convert away their monster and just uh, to send them to the graveyard to some degree. As for the Hojo, the Valence Warrior, if this card moves to a different zone, you get to perform a fusion summon. So essentially that's what you get to do with this. And if you summon the fusion monster, you're in a really, really good position because this deck has some of the strangest removal against monster that, well, I wouldn't really consider removal, but it's kind of close to just converting them into a different card. And that's what we're here to talk about. So that's all for the Valence monsters. As for the non-Valence monsters, we have Kaiden and we have Kuro Obi. These are essentially just scale nines, but on top of just being like a scale nine pendulum monster, the best part about these monsters is that they jump back into your hand once you perform your pendulum summon, keeping your pendulum zones empty because you need to use those as your spawn points of your monster. So these are fantastic. Scale nine also works perfectly in that regard because your highest level monster in your main deck is eight. So you'll be able to pendulum summon all of them and essentially it's just really really useful although there's not much of an opportunity to use the uh, main monster effects of these monsters but that's okay they've already kind of served their purpose and they mainly affect stuff in the pendulum zone columns as well so if you get the chance to use it then it'd be great but aside from that their main purpose is just, just to be pendulum scales that go jump back into the hand next we have one copy of a Abyss Actor Curtain Riser. You just need additional names because we want to get access into monsters in the extra deck. And now we do still have a Pendulum Base uh, Link Monster, which is going to be Beyond the Pendulum. And this is help, going to help you get that name. And this is really important because it helps you dig into your Pendulum Summon and the scales that you do not have. Then we have two copies of Master Cerberus and one copy of the Mythical Beast Jackal King. Now, the Mythical Beast package here is to help you get an additional Pendulum name onto the field so that you can go into Beyond the Pendulum, which is part 
part of the extra deck. And on top of that, this Jackal King can also provide you with a monster-based negation, which helps you protect against a hand-based disruption such as Ash Blossom or Nibiru, and something big along those lines. And the level 8 and the level 6, they can matter in the long run as we do run tuners in the deck to also help us get into the Beyond the Pendulum. And with the additional level 2 tuner and the level 8 uh, Master Cerberus, that means that you could probably go into a Synchro 10, or if you have two 8s on the field, you could probably overlay them into making a rank 8 monster. And for our last four monsters, for more access to Beyond the Pendulum, we have Deep Sea Diva into Crystal Hockey Fibrax, so that we can go into Odd Synchron and we can use this and make the Beyond the Pendulum, and eventually maybe just Pendulum summon this card back out. Since it is level 2 and we're running, you know, 8s in the deck, we can get access to Baron de Fleur, because we do not really normal summon all the time, and if we can normal summon, I'd rather normal summon that gives me the search of something really useful, even though it does require a couple of extra steps, I think it's still worth it, because I definitely do not want my Shinonome to be the one getting hit by the negation. So this is kind of where I want to build. And once we get a lot of monsters onto the field, that's when we start building stuff from the extra deck. And so for spell cards, I'm going to start off with Pendulum Treasure, although the build is going to change a lot once Darkwing Blast comes up because there's a new spell card support coming in the future, and that's a complete game changer. It's like having an E-Tally that also provides you with the movement, so you get both the monster and the secondary effect all together in one card. That's going to be in the future, but for now, we're going to be playing Pendulum Treasure because we get to dig out our Shinonome or something that we need access to and put it into the extra deck face up. So when we do the Pendulum Summit, we get this Pendulum Summit something of high value that will definitely advance the game state. I don't want to play too many copies because this card is <laughs> once per turn, so having multiple copies do not do me any favors. Then I'm playing two copies of Senate Switch. Some people play one, some people play two. For now, I'm playing two. Later on, I'm probably only going to shift to one, and if I get an opportunity, I might consider Columns, which is, a, which is like a quick play version of Senate Switch. Uh, but the reason why we have to play this is because we need to be able to shift Yoshino Nome into different zones to really get that advantage. And opening with this card initially, it doesn't really hurt too, too much. Uh, and it's actually really, really good if you have the Priestess already, and uh, so you get free searches. And speaking of uh, the ability to search out your Ascendant Switches, Valence Wars, the place of beginning, this is like a collection on the shelf, and they're ready to put them into like the board game use. So the reason why this card is super important is because this is how one of your recovery cards. You want to banish this card from the graveyard once you have like a bunch of valence monster in your extra deck face up, you get to put them back onto the scale. And so if you're holding on to your scale nine monsters, uh, you can just place them onto the field and get your pendulum summon back out, or you can just keep on pushing monsters out. So, and try to set up link monsters so that when you do a pendulum summon, it gets even bigger. But on top of that, this card is also the card that searches for any of your valence field spell. Hopefully there's gonna be more in the future, but uh, yeah, you get to add one of those. And the reason why you get to add Senate Switch is because you get to destroy uh, a pendulum card on your you that you control, and then you get to add Senate Switch. So when you activate this card, it gives you Senate Switch and a field spell, which is really, really good. So you want to get this card with the Shinonome because Shinonome getting this card, uh, then as long as you control a different Pendulum card, you would choose to destroy something so that you can get the Senate Switch and then you can use the Senate Switch to move your Shinonome over so you can get another monster. That's why this card is really important. I see some people choosing not to run it and I'm gonna question that for a little bit. And for the field spells, we play two copies of Shinra Banjo and two copies of Koenig Wizen. Uh, to kind of break down their effects, both players get to use these. The turn player gets to activate these cards effect. And uh, Koenig Wizen is a form of removal against your opponent. And Shinra Banjo is a way of summoning back that removal. Because in terms of removal, Koenig Wizen, as long as there's a monster in the same column as your opponent's column, they can do the same thing to you. You get to push them into the spell and trap zone. Shinra Bansho is the exact opposite of that. If there's two field spells on the field, you get to target one of your monsters in your spell and trap zones and summon them into the same column. So this is the push, this is the pullback. So this puts them into respawn timing and this is the card that respawns them out. So once you use Koenig Wizen, your ideal situation is to get rid of your own Shinra Banshos so that they can't summon it back and most monsters in the spell and trap zone. Uh, as a continuous spell, they don't have any effect. So that's a really fantastic way of removing your opponent's monsters because they can't use them. Yeah, how about that? And it doesn't put it into the graveyard. It doesn't put it into 
anywhere <laughs> that's useful for your opponent so that they won't be able to trigger the graveyard effect or their banish effect say like mirror jade pushing a mirror jade into like the, the spell and drop zone mm, that's really really good so that's something that you can consider with these field spells and another thing to note of course when you activate one you have to place one onto the other side so if you open multiple copies of these cards just keep in mind that you're not going to be able to activate an additional copy once you don't have an op opposing name that's still in the deck. And it has to be in the deck too, so that's one of the biggest restrictions when it comes to these cards. And finally, the last card, one copy of Call by the Grave because it's Call by the Grave. Now for the extra deck, I play one copy of Mamanaka, the Valence United, and two copies of the Valence Genesis Grand Duke. So. In general, their pendulum effect is that if they're on the scales, uh, they have two effects. One is that they can summon themselves out, so they can push themselves forward into the same column. There's no other restrictions or any sort of condition applying to that. But it does have the other effect before you do push them onto the field. First of all, they're a scale 10, so maybe you want to get some pendulum action going on first. You know, get that pendulum summon in. But the other thing is that you can move one monster in your monster zone, uh, main monster zone, and move it to an adjacent zone. So you can move them horizontally into a different zone to trigger your effect. So if they're on the scale, you can use that. And there's tons of ways to put them on the scale. Uh, Mamanaka, naturally, if it is destroyed, it goes onto the pendulum scale anyway. But in case it does get, you know, put into, say, the extra deck, say it got destroyed and then it got destroyed again, you can use stuff like Valence Wars to put it back onto the pendulum scale and summon it back onto the field using its own effect because it was still summoned up properly uh, in the first place. So that's your advantage for that. Now, in terms of monster removal, as a monster, this card has some of the best removal in the game because it definitely removes the threat, but it keeps the monster on the field or rather it converts it into a continuous spell by essentially just pushing it into the spell and trap zone. And if there is a card already there, it will destroy the card that was already there just to push it into that zone, which is fantastic. I mean, that's the best way of removing a monster without triggering their graveyard trigger, their leaving field trigger, their banish trigger. You're just not triggering anything. You're just pushing them back there. And that's why this card is really, really good. A really great form of disruption overall. As for the Valence Grand Duke, this card is easier to summon overall in two sense of the word. First of all, it requires less material. This one requires three Valence monsters as material. But this is not too bad for this one here because this monster can be summoned from your extra deck by tributing a Valence monster that's non-fusion, level five, in one of your extra monster zones. Or anywhere that's under an extra monster zone, you can basically just tribute and summon. And that's why it works well with the regular Duke, the Dominator Duke, because Duke will take control of your opponent's monster, and if it's a high level one, you usually want to take it into a zone where it is under an extra monster zone so that you can tribute that monster because now it's considered as a valence monster, so you can summon out the Grand Duke. And the Grand Duke is level 10, which is why we have more monsters to kind of support the level 10s. And when the Grand Duke is summoned onto the field, if there is something that's been pushed into the spell and trap zone, you can target one of your opponent's monsters in their spell and trap zone and return it to the hand. They'll take damage equal to the attack, and then you also gain half of that attack onto this monster. So this is one of your aggressors for sure. So the only synchro monster I play in the deck is going to be a copy of Baron, because Baron de Fleur is the Omni Negate, and it's very easy with a level 2 tuner and a level 8 monster that I can just pendulum summon out. This is one of the easier negations I can establish onto the board. But as for utility cards, that really depends on what I have in my hand and how I build my, my board. Until, of course, Darkwing Blast, where you know that becomes a much more streamlined. Uh, we have Abyss Dweller, in case I have two level 4s. I, in case I have two level 8s, I have Hope Harbinger, and that goes for Master Cerberus as well. Master Cerberus plus, uh, say, one of the Valence level 8s. And in case I go into the Dukes, then if I need to close out a game and burn my opponent to death, then I'll have a Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon, Gustav Max, to do so because these guys are level 10 and they're very easy to summon. And I don't even believe they're even once per turn. So you can just make as many of these as you need just so that you can get to that burn effect. As for the actual bread and butter of the extra deck, we're gonna start off with the Beyond the Pendulum. We are a Pendulum deck, so we can search our Pendulum cards. This is gonna help search your scale 9s or search your scale 1s, your Yoshino know, Nomes or your Ninjas to shift stuff from left and right. Or if you wanna get to the Fusion, you get the Hojo. So that's why I play Beyond the Pendulum. But remember, if you do get that search effect, everything is basically turned off until you Pendulum summon. So everything is actually beyond the pendulum summon. And if you do pendulum summon two monsters of different levels into the arrows that she points to, you have an optional effect of targeting two cards on the field and destroying two cards. So it can come up and it can completely, you know, be a complete game shift uh, when your opponent has like two cards 
in the back that are face down and you can just clear it all out. Next, I play one copy of Christian Hockey Fibrax, mainly just to go into Beyond the Pendulum through the Performable Odd Eyes Synchron, so that's why we have the Christian Hockey Fibrax. And then we also have a finisher card, which we end on our board, which is an IP Mascarena. And speaking of IP Mascarena, we have a copy of Nightmare Unicorn, and this can help us get into Axis Code Talker fairly easily, as well as Selene. Now, Selene is something that you have to be very careful of, because if you activate any of your low-level Pendulum Scales, those are going to lock you out from summoning basically a majority of cards with Selene, because it's very hard for you to put a Pendulum Monster into the graveyard, so summoning a monster in defense position is not going to be easy. And finally, I have one copy of Appaloosa, and of course we finish it off with an access code talker so that we can access code pop the board and go for game. So that's how we're gonna conclude our board, and this is typically uh, in the opening play. If we do get rid of our Beyond the Pendulum, it's gonna be uh, going into the Appaloosa. All right, I know that the explanation, just telling you guys what the cards do, doesn't really explain very much. So I'm gonna demonstrate what this card is capable of doing in an ideal situation. So in this ideal situation, we already have the Shinonome Axis, we have a Deep Sea Diva to go into, say, the Beyond the Pendulum, or have a Tuner Axis, and we have an additional free summon through the Mythical Beast Master Cerberus. And so the additional two cards, as long as they are more Pendulum cards, we are in business. And in this case, we do have two more. Ooh, the sixes. Okay, we have a lot of card advantage here. And I'm going to show you guys how this deck really plays out. So starting things off, you want to make sure that you can still access all of your other monsters while you still can. So we're going to start off with a normal summon of a Deep Sea Diva. And using the Deep Sea Diva, we're going to activate the effect of Deep Sea Diva and special summon out another copy of Deep Sea Diva. This will automatically give us access to Hockey Fibrax if we need them. Uh, but in this case, I don't think we do because we do have a Master Cerberus already here. So we're going to activate the um, Mythical Beast Master Cerberus using its Pendulum Zone effect. We're going to destroy this card, and if I do, I'm going to add a level 7 or a lower Mythical Beast Monster. And that Mythical Beast Monster is, of course, going to be Jackal King, because Jackal King, I'm going to activate the Jackal King because I don't control another uh, card in the other Pendulum Zone. So I'm going to activate the Jackal King, and I'm going to destroy it to summon out the Master Cerberus. So now the Master Cerberus has been summoned out, and this has been placed into my... Uh, extra deck. So with that being said, now that we have a Pendulum Monster and we have, well, I guess a non-Pendulum Monster, we can perform a quick little Link Summon into our Beyond the Pendulum. Notice I'm summoning in very particular zones. These zones do matter, and you want to make sure that you can keep zone spacing available for you to move your cards, otherwise you can't trigger the uh, the movement effect of your valence monsters. Now I'm going to activate the Beyond the Pendulum and add a scale 9 because I do not have a scale 9 right now. So I'm going to add, I'm just going to grab the first one I can see here, which is going to be a Kuro Obi, the Karate Spirit. So I have a scale 9. And note, because I activated Beyond the Pendulum, I can't activate monster effects and my scales right now and anything in the pendulum zone they have no effect either so i have to perform a pendulum summon to unlock myself so in this case i'm going to activate the kurobi over here activate the scale nine closer to the monster in your extra monster zone because that's going to summon to the arrow and you gotta make sure you have an open zone for you to push your monster into the correct column otherwise you'll be locked out anyways so now i'm going to activate a shinonome and with the shinonome uh, now I have a scale 1 and a scale 9, and we have to perform a Pendulum Summon, so I'm going to go grab these two since this is 9, these are 8s and 6, I definitely have access to these. I'm going to put the Jackal King perhaps in the middle, and I'm going to put the Master Service over here, and then I'm also going to, from my hand, Pendulum Summon the Mad Marquis, because I can use this card right away compared to all the other ones. And once I perform the Pendulum Summon, Kuro Obi has a mandatory effect, which uh, will put it back into my hand. In this particular case now, I can perform one particular action right now which is to just immediately just uh get the synchro summon of the baron onto the field so now that baron on the field so i have a negation a little bit of protection now i'm going to activate marquis i'm going to roll a die and that's going to generate uh the number that i can excavate so i get two cards i can excavate a buster baron and a deep sea diva well i'm just going to grab the buster baron in this case and deep sea diva will be shuffled back into the deck so from here not that the Marcus has already been used, but I can definitely use Shinonome and use this monster to my advantage. So I'm going to activate the Shinonome and Special Summoner onto the zone in front. And I'm going to activate the Ignition effect. And that's going to give me a copy of Valence Wars, the Place of Beginnings. I'm going to activate the Valence Wars. 
and uh, I'm going to add to my hand one of the field spells. So I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a Shinra Bonsho. So Valence World, Shinra Bonsho. It doesn't, does it really matter which one I add? Because essentially you're still going to be putting two of the field spells onto there. Now after I've added the card, I'm also going to use uh, the following effect. I'm going to destroy one Pendulum Monster I control. A uh, one Pendulum Monster card I control. I'm going to destroy this. And if I do, I get to add a Senate Switch into my hand. So now I get myself a Senate Switch and I just open the zone for my Shinonome to move. So these are the two cards I add to my hand. And this is now going to be placed into the graveyard. And this gives you follow up during your next turn so you can put one of your face up uh, Valence monster that's in your extra deck into one of your Pendulum zones. So from now I'm going to activate the Senate switch. And with the Senate switch, I do have two mover monsters and I have the field spell so I can definitely get everything summoned out. Baron being a low level monster, I can always summon him out anyway. Now, now I'm currently locked into Valence Monster, so I'm going to use the Senate Switch, target the Shinonome to move her over by one zone. That's going to trigger the Shinonome, and in this case, I want to see if I can get as close to getting the Fusion as I can. The Fusion would be a great disruption, and also when I activate the Senate Switch, I do have mandatory counters I have to put here, so I currently have two, so let's just put two right now. Uh, Shinonome is going to activate, we're going to grab ourselves the Hojo. So we're going to go for Hojo. I'm going to see if I can actually get to the, uh, the fusion here. Next, I'm going to activate the Hojo. Now that Hojo is on the field, that's going to put two more counters onto the uh, Jackal King. But note this, if you do have three monsters in the middle, you're going to be kind of locked out. Although this board isn't too bad. I mean, I have Monster Negation and Omni Negation here. Uh, this isn't exactly where I want to end this board off, so I want to get a little bit more. I might have to sacrifice away my Jackal King now uh, to get this, but first I'm going to activate Hojo to special summon itself out because I do control a Spellcaster Water Valence Monster, so I'm going to special summon this card out. And now I'm going to use the Shinonome because I can't perform the Fusion Summon if I can't move zones, and I need to do a double movement right here. So in this case, I will take the Beyond the Pendulum, I'm going to take the Jackal King, and the priestess as well and i'm going to use this to perform another link summon just to open up my zones a little bit more so i'm going to put an appaloosa on the opposite side so I have just more to play with here and and so this opens up my zones entirely now you might be wondering hey that hojo is basically stuck but not entirely with this particular hand oh although i don't really need the second name to move my monsters i could use senate switch once more because i can activate hojo's effect and I'm going to put this Senate Switch back into my hand. And then I can activate the Senate Switch. And this is once per turn per copy. So I'm going to activate Senate Switch to move it over once. Of course, I can't perform a Fusion Summon at the moment. Because I don't have enough materials to perform that Fusion Summon. So in this particular case now, since I already have a Water Spellcaster, I can activate the Nats Nazuki. And I can even activate the Valen Buster Baron. And I can Special Summon out the Nazuki onto the field. And I can also activate the Buster Baron to special summon the Buster Baron. And I do have a zone to move it over. See how complicated this can get? I'm going to activate the Nazuki to move it over, therefore triggering the Hojo. And uh, with the Hojo already triggered, I'm going to activate to perform the Fusion Summon. And all of these cards will go into the extra deck. And therefore, I get to special summon Mamanaka, the Valence United. This will provide me with a great form of disruption against my opponent during their main phase. And I still have a Kuro Obi in my hand, and I have Valence War in the Graver, which will provide me with a follow-up because I can just put some of these onto the field, and then I can resummon them, and I can re-establish another Beyond the Pendulum and try this whole thing all over again. That's why uh, this deck is pretty, pretty powerful, and it gets even better once we get to Darkwing Blast. So that's the kind of the rundown of this entire combo, what you're trying to achieve. Depending on how many monsters you have, you might end with an IP Masquerina. Things will be different for everybody, but that's kind of the rundown of what you're trying to develop onto your field. That's all I got for this deck from Tactical Masters, but tomorrow's deck from Tactical Masters is going to be presented by Nishi, and Nishi is going to cover Labyrinth with you guys, and uh, Nishi is known to be a bit of a cheeky player, so we're going to see his very first deck profile here on MST TV. so you guys definitely subscribe, ding that notification bell, and you guys don't want to miss out, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.